Orange County Board of Supervisors meeting, recorded December 15, 2020. It's five o'clock to call Orange County Board to order. Roll call. We have 25 supervisors present, 19 in person, 6 online. Uh, pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Invocation by Supervisor Soik. Okay, thank you. Um, so I, I pulled something here that uh, I've had for a long time, and uh, the title is Potato Chips. A little boy wanted to meet God. He knew it was going to be a long trip to where God lived, so he packed his suitcase with a bag of potato chips and a six-pack of wood and started on his journey. When he had gone about three blocks, he met an old man. He was sitting in the park just staring at some pigeons. The boy sat down next to him, opened his suitcase. He was about to take a drink from his root beer when he noticed that the old man looked hungry. So he offered him some potato chips. He gratefully accepted, and accepted it and smiled at him. His smile was so pretty that the boy wanted to see it again. So he offered him a root beer. Again, he smiled at him. The boy was delighted. They sat there all afternoon eating and smiling, but they never said a word. As twilight approached, the boy realized how tired he was and he got up to leave. But before he had gone more than a few steps, he turned around, ran back, gave the old man a hug. He gave him the biggest smile ever. When the boy opened the door to his, his home shortly late, short, short time later, his mother was surprised to see the look of joy on his face. She asked him, what did you do today that made you so happy? He replied, I had lunch with God. Before his mother could respond, he added, you know what? He's got the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. Meanwhile, the old man, also radiant with joy, returned to his home. His son was stunned by the look of peace on his face and asked, Dad, what did you do today that made you so happy? He replied, I ate potato chips in the park with God. However, before his son responded, he added, you know, he's much younger than I expected. Uh -huh. Too often, we underestimate the power of a touch, smile, kind word, listening ear, honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. People come into our lives for, for a reason, a season, a lifetime, embrace all equally equally have lunch with god bring chips thank you Boy. review and approval of november 10th 2020 county board minutes motion by uh, barry jakowski seconded by splinter discussion or changes all those in favor with aye? Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Minutes are approved. Correspondence. 2020 years of service recognition, County Executive Holman, HHS Board Correspondence, and County Clerk Fillin Payroll Processing Software Transition. Uh, presentations, uh, Chief Deputy Clerk, Jen's Munis ESS brief overview for supervisors. Yes. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to quick share my screen here and just do a quick two minute overview of kind of navigating the um, site so you're able to view your detailed payroll information. All right. Um, 
So yeah, again, brief, just brief overview. So all of you supervisors should have your new tablets or getting your new computer tablets from IT. Um, right on the desktop, there should be an icon that says employee self-service, um, looks like this. Uh, if not, the link was also in that uh, packet that was handed out, um, as well as it's on this slide here as well. I'm pretty sure ess.co.portage.wi.us. Um, so when you click that link or go to that um, URL, it'll need a page that looks like this. And then all you'll need to do is up in the top right hand corner, that little arrow is, click on that, um, and that'll take you to the login screen. Um, which will look like this. Um, really the only thing to note on here is your username and password will be the same as what you use to log into those computers or to access your email. Um, just note that for the username, um, you don't need to include the at co.portage.wi.us, just need the your last name and first letter um, or however to format it. Uh, next, when you log in, um, you'll have this menu over here on the left-hand side. Um, all you'll need to do is click on time entry, and then that will take you to a page that looks like the one on the right. Um, and then there, as you can see, you'll be able to see each day. Um, and then if you go down the columns, you'll be able to see the different meeting types. Um, so there's one for just the regular county board, or a regular committee meeting, sorry. Um, one for county board meetings, and then one if you're the committee chair or acting secretary. Um, you should, any of those that you attended, you should see then a one in there. Um, and when you click on that, you'll be able to see the notes um, and that'll be the detail on um, which committee meeting that was. Um, so for example, county board is just three nines, nine, nine, nine. Um, and I'll skip over. And that guy that was on your tables or um, provided, that'll have the full listing of what all those numbers, which committees those correspond to. Um, all of you only serve on a few committees, so it shouldn't be too bad to kind of get that list uh, narrowed down for what's applicable for you. Uh, going back, same for mileage. Um, you'll see the different mileage categories. There's one for county board mileage. Um, and that'll just, one corresponds to your default mileage. So whatever your normal mileage is to the courthouse or annex building, uh, one just will always pay you um, for that number of miles. If it's something different, you'll see it in the row below the mileage reimbursement, um, and then that will show the actual amount um, that's being reimbursed. Um, otherwise, you'll still be getting uh, the emailed statements, those direct deposit notifications that'll have all the payment information. This is just how um, you'll be able to find out some of the detail of which committees you're getting paid for um, since those paper statements aren't being uh, mailed out anymore. So that's really all I had. I'm happy to take any, any questions. Anybody at home have any questions? Have so um, really, this is just communi This is a new way of communicating with us. We don't have to do. We don't have to submit anything in terms of meeting attendance. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Correct. So we in the county clerk's office will still be entering all meeting attendance. This is instead of those paper statements that were being mailed out. This is just how you can view that detailed information. Okay. All right. And then is the same true for statements for tax purposes? Do we access those <laughs> them or are they mailed out? Uh, there won't be any changes with that. Um, so however finance currently does that, this won't affect that at all. Okay. Anybody Lee else have any questions? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is Melissa uh, Johnson. Uh, Lee, I have a question. Is there going to be an external link um, for, because I don't have a, a county email, I use a Gmail. And so I, would I have an external link to that? Uh, yeah. Um, so I'll have to double check that with finance to make sure it's set up. But in that um, guide that was handed out, there's instructions on accessing it if you don't have a county email. Okay. Um, so I don't remember exactly what that is offhand. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for that question, but um, yeah, it is no, in there and good. we can communicate that yeah. further as we get to that point. I did not expect you to have the answers to everything. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Supervisor Gifford. Yeah, what's, uh, what's the kickoff date for this? 
Uh, so this will start with the December payroll that is paid at the beginning of January. Um, so for the November payroll, that's the timing, the way the month fell, that's getting paid out this Friday. Um, so paper statements will still accompany this. Um, it'll be for next month, um, paychecks. Uh, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Lee. <clears throat> thank you, Lee. Yep, of course. Health and Human Services Director Shabilsky, County Executive Holman, COVID-19 update. And Ray has some uh, better news than last updates. <laughs> Good evening. Good to see you all, and welcome to Munis. You'll love it. Uh, <laughs> voice of experience. So, uh, so some updates for you this evening. Um, we are currently, as of today, at 5,155 positive cases. We've had 22,317 negative cases since the start. Um, we, are, we are at 200, we've had 219 people hospitalized since the start of the pandemic, and we've had 43 uh, fatalities uh, in Portage County. We're, currently, we have 240 active cases and 4,872 recovered cases. So uh, you add the 43 fatalities in there and you'll get to the 5,155. Um, you know, if, if a month ago when I was here, I, I, I said, you know, we're, you know, with, with the anticipation of the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday, uh, we were expecting a big spike in numbers. We didn't see it. We really didn't see it. Um, DHS came out today or yesterday actually and said, they didn't see it either. Um, so actually over the last two weeks, uh, we have averaged 34 positive cases a day here in Portage County. Uh, the high was on the 2nd of, of December. Uh, we had 58 positive cases. Our low was on the 4th of December. We had 14 positive cases. In the two weeks previous to that, we averaged 55 positive cases a day. So we have seen a downward trend and with that, uh, we have gone back to a more robust contact tracing. So now our contact tracers are not just contacting the positive case, they're contacting the positive case, household members, and any what, what we refer to as like a plus one. So boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe you visit grandma or grandpa a lot. We're, we're making sure that we're reaching out to them uh, to do our contact tracing and, and explaining to them what quarantine is about. So um, we continue to do our testing. Our community testing, which is our Tuesday, Thursday testing that the county public health does with uh, you know, EMS. Uh, we have tested 2,354 people so far. Out of that, 425 have been positive. Uh, 360 of those 425 have been Portage County residents. Um, so that positivity rate's right around 18%. Our wing testing, which is our National Guard testing, um, have tested 1,463 people to date. Uh, and there have been 182 positives, 140 from Portage County, but the positives only go back to the 23rd of November. We just don't have that data yet for the last few times wing was here. So, uh, speaking of testing, uh, we will continue with our community-based testing on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, all the way through January at least. Uh, wing testing, we did find out uh, just yesterday that uh, they will continue in January as well. The governor um, indicated that uh, they will be available through March or through the first quarter. So we don't know if they'll, we'll, they'll be up here the whole time, but they will be here through January. I anticipate they'll be here through February. All the times remain the same. So it'll be Mondays from nine to five, Tuesdays from one to five, Thursdays from nine to one. So um, Al, Al asked me to talk a little bit about some of the changes you may have heard from about quarantine. Um, the bottom line is the quarantine standard is still 14 days. That's the gold standard. That's, that's what we want people to do. The CDC is now allowing people to quarantine for 10 days or seven days. Uh, they're really, the, the DHS has said it's really based kind of on a hardship. So if you have somebody that needs to get back to work, um, you know, they can do a 10 day quarantine instead of 14, but there's some caveats about this. The 10 day quarantine, you have to be symptom free or asymptomatic the whole time. You also uh, have to continue to symptom monitor through 14 days. But if you're symptom free for those 10 days, you can come back 
out of quarantine <clears throat> on day 11. The seven day option is basically the same thing, but you have to receive a negative test on day six or seven. Again, have to be asymptomatic the whole time. If you have a negative test on day six or seven, you will be released on day eight. So those changes are now in effect, but again, if all possible, and we will still recommend that you spend 14 days in quarantine, it is the gold standard. Your risk, our risk increases by one to 10% on the 10 day, increases up to 20%. So there's a 20% more uh, risk factor out there if you come out in seven days. But they're out there. Um, if people want the option, and again, if somebody's saying, look, it's really advantageous that I get back to work, or maybe somebody's saying, I need an employee to come back to work. If they fit these criteria, we would let people out of quarantine based on that. Uh, so finally, the last thing I wanted to uh, talk about is vaccines, because that's a hot topic and what's going on. So currently, the, um, we have, we have uh, applied to, uh, to become a vaccinator, um, and we have been accepted. We don't have any vaccine. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, so the state indi indicated that they needed about 400,000 doses of vaccine to get through what was phase 1A. This week, the state received 49,000 doses. A little short, a little bit. Um, next week, they anticipate getting another 101,000 doses. So uh, the, the vaccine will come into the state. The vaccine is going to be distributed on a hub and spoke model. So it's going to come into the hub, get distributed out onto the spokes. Um, and basically, in, in they have tiered as to who's going to receive the vaccine. Uh, 1A is healthcare workers and skilled nursing facilities. So healthcare systems will get their own vaccine. Uh, skilled nursing facilities, it's going to be contracted out to pharmacies. Pharmacies will be going into skilled nursing facilities and, and giving the vaccine. 1B is essential workforce. That's still being debated as to what it is. Um, law enforcement, firefighters, possibly teachers, possibly social workers, it's out there. So there's nothing that has been decided, but that is that will be 1B, will be that essential workforce. 1C is, is individuals over the age of 65 or anyone that has underlying health conditions. So that will be 1C, these will go in order. And remember, th this is all gonna be impacted on the amount of vaccine that we get, all right? Where public health will really start to get involved is probably when we get into uh, what is called phase two, uh, which is critical populations. They haven't defined what that is. And so I don't know the difference between essential and critical, but it's out there. Um, anyone left over from phase one, and then it'll start with general population. And then phase three is just general population. Timing wise, it really depends on when the vaccine gets here. We are hoping by the end of the quarter, the first quarter, we are really gearing up to do general population vaccination. And that's it. That's what I got for you tonight. Any questions I can answer for you, Mr. Sike? Supervisor Sike, thank you. Um, so we, we have a lot of numbers that, that you have given us um, this month, the previous months, and, and, and so we have a large set of numbers at this point. And I haven't asked this in the past, but I'm going to ask it now. Are you able to break down those numbers for the age of 18 and below? As far as positives, I can, yes, sir. Okay, and in any other horrible number that would would come with that sure um are, are you able to to break that down this evening or can you break it down for our our next monthly meeting and, i can break it down have... i don't have that information with me at, at the tip of my fingers but i can get it for you okay I'm, i'll be um, asking ray to come back in january or next month so he can if he can bring it back then if you can wait and then he can give it with everyone yep and, and that's fine i i will I'll, I'll look forward um to to that as well and then the other, along with that, what is going to be your recommendation for the Stevens Point School District moving forward after the first of the year? So we, we are, we're in constant communication with all the school districts and where, and where we have been and where we will continue to be is that you know they have to be able to have the workforce to educate their kids. Mm -hmm. Obviously, and you'll hear this from all of the, all of the educational systems across the county, in-person learning is the best learning for our kids. They will say that 
I agree with that personally, but it really will depend, and we're, we're not going to say you have to close or you, you, know, you should stay open because it's really going to depend on their workforce. If they have the teachers that are able to teach, I think with the safeguards that all, all the districts have put in place as far as putting kids together in cohorts, make, you know, trying to make sure those kids are, are, are creating their safe social distance, face coverings, things like that, um, it's, it's okay to be in school. And we do not intend to say, oh, the COVID numbers are up here, you need to close schools. That's going to be a school district decision, okay? Thank you. You will. I, I have to think though too, I haven't been on a Zoom call where Superintendent Gerlach of the school system has not made a, a comment where he has said that he believes that the best learning for the kids is in school. He he really does believe that and is working towards it. But at the same time, I've had him ask or beg for people to be student teachers or someone to be able to come back and help uh, because of the shortages in school teachers. And before that, it was bus drivers, I believe. So uh, he's he's really dealing with, with uh, people shortages to staff those positions, even if they were back. So, but... Uh, He's working and doing everything he can to get to, uh, he shares the same sentiment, the kids need to be back in school to learn the best they can. So, anybody else? Supervisor Rakowski. Ray, with funding winding down for 2020 with COVID, what have you heard for 2021? Yeah, great question, uh, Larry. So, um, you know, there, there is, uh, you know, we just received a new contract that, that gave us some additional dollars uh, about $200,000, um, but it has to be used by the end of the year. So right now what we're hearing is that, is that you know, money's coming. Well, so is Christmas. <laughs> so we don't know exactly. We haven't heard how much. Um, you know, we've heard uh, some things around the fact that, um, you know, well, there's going to be a $50,000 base and then this. Um, honestly, I think, uh, you know, a lot of the funding, and again, you know, we're, we're trying to do, we're still trying to test, we're still trying to contact trace, and now we're going to try to vaccinate all at the same time. So it's going to be where, where they're going to want to put the resources. That's going to be a big thing. Federally, um, it's, we haven't heard a lot. Although uh, some people have said that we probably aren't going to hear much until the, until there's a change in administration. I know I've uh, heard on the federal level that there were talks at one point about the monies coming from the federal level going to the state. Uh, WCA and, and others have asked uh, for it to go to the counties, but logistically that's probably a nightmare. And what they're settling on is asking the feds to send it to the state with uh, specifications on how it's supposed to be distributed or handed out. Uh, so I, I know they're, they're trying to work towards that and they want to, they know that the meter is going to start running January 1st with contact tracing and testing and all the rest of this and that's going to fall to counties. So hopefully they can figure something out. Anybody else, anybody at home have any questions? Uh, Supervisor Zastro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Director Shabilsky, uh, you may not have an answer for this, and that's fine, and I apologize. I probably could have asked you this yesterday at our meeting, but have you heard anything regarding, uh, so Wisconsin got approximately a little less of 10 or 15 percent of what they were hoping to get. Is that correct? Yes, they got like 49,000 doses out of the 400,000 they need. Okay. Uh, have you heard anything uh, as far as other states go? Uh, are they in the same boat or uh, you know, are you asking uh, everybody get 10 percent of what they're asking oh, yeah i i haven't heard I guess, that jerry i mean i certainly can look at that but i i mean i think most states were are, were short i mean they just they, they just simply didn't have the you know i i don't want to say they didn't have the vaccine but i think logistically there's just a lot of logistics to move especially the pfizer vaccine that you have to keep at minus 80 degrees or colder uh, super cold, uh, you know, before you, you know, and, and so I think there's just a lot of work around that, but I know everybody was short. And I know that they they were looking at trying to get Moderna's uh, released or uh, as well, and it doesn't have that, it's just refrigerated, it doesn't have that <laughs> caveat. And Someone else had said before, just because it's the first one out doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best. So, you had another question, Mr. Zastro? No, I just wanted to say, I guess it's not moving at warp speed, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I know that uh, we have to also make sure that we are uh, um, keeping those slots open because if we start to vaccinate 40,000 people 
in three weeks, we have to vaccinate the first 40,000 again. Uh, they have to get the second dose. So you don't want to be shorted, and it's like somebody missed it and didn't get that second round. they got to start over. So uh, we have to be conscious of those doses, too, and I, I'm sure they're all watching that. So anybody else have any comments? Uh, Supervisor Pataki. Can't hear you, Stan. And You're muted. He's unmuted, but, but there. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Do we have a choice of whether to get the Moderna or the Pfizer? Uh, we were told that we will distribute the vaccine the state sends us. <laughs> so, I, I Stan, to be honest with you, I think we're going to get both. I think we're going to get both Pfizer and Moderna. Okay. Now, I understand that you can't. You got to, if you get the first dose of Moderna, your second dose has got to be Moderna. You can't get Pfizer. Who's going to keep track of that? Well, well, the, 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 there will be an electronic database of that. So when you get whatever vaccine you get the first time, um, it'll be put in there. Because they're, you know, federally, and we just talked about this this afternoon, they talked about what happens if somebody gets a, their first vaccine here and then snowbirds somewhere else. You know, they we want them to get their second dose. And they said that they would have the capability to to be able to look up to say, nope, Stan got Moderna. He needs Moderna in 28 days. Okay. Boy, that can create a logistic yeah. nightmare, too. You think I enough agree. people heading <laughs> south and they don't have enough for their populate, whatever. Luckily, we don't have a lot of people coming here for the winter. <laughs> That'd be a different kind of snowbird. <laughs> Supervisor Dodge. Um, I've heard people comment, and I guess I'd like your um, reaction to that. Because we've been testing less people is why our numbers of positives are down. Well, we certainly have been testing less people. That is true. Uh, our testing numbers have, have gone down. Um, you know, I, I think that that you know, obviously, uh, I, I think it has impacted our positive numbers. Uh, you know, the CDC, uh, you know, it has come out and said, you know, for every positive case you had, there could be a, up to eight more in the community. That at some point, not currently. So, I, I think it's, it's I think it's impacted our numbers. Why are people getting tested? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I think for some people, they they may be saying, if I'm going to get sick, I'm going to get sick. I don't want to deal with the isolation. I don't want to deal with the quarantine. I'm just going to stay home till I'm better and then go on. Um, Obviously, that's not what we would recommend, but you know, uh, people are going to make their own choices. But I, I do believe it's impacted our numbers just because of that. So, thank you, yep. Supervisor Pataki. Again, uh, supposedly uh, on the Moderna, you get two 100 mil micrograms doses in 28 days, while the Pfizer is only 30 micrograms. What is the the difference between, I know the difference between, is like 70, but between 100 and <laughs> yeah, baby, 100, a punch, Dan. <laughs> 100 micrograms and 30 micrograms is one stronger or weaker or what? Well, well Pfizer, Pfizer is still two shots. So Pfizer is two shots, but it's 21 days apart. And Moderna is two shots, and they're 28 days apart. I, I I don't have enough scientific background on it to tell you the difference as far as, you know, the exact amount of, of that shot, Dan. Okay. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Supervisor Medin. Just a little bit of an aside. On the last meeting, we had some discussion on the communicable disease ordinance that would be coming out with time. Could you give us just a little bit of an update on that? I, normally Chapter that four. would come from the executive, sure. but he's not on the agenda today. Sure. Uh, so, so, you know, right now, um, you know, we, we the, the county executive has asked for input on a number of, of different levels, if you will, in regards to um, you know that chapter four and the chapter four changes. Because truly, what 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 we what we believe is is that you know educating the public as much as we can is going to be the best thing. Um, you know, the other factor that comes into play is there are still some really big cases sitting out in the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Um, in regards to uh, you know indoor gathering limits, this, that, and the other thing, and 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 we expect some type of decision out of that any 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 day. Um, but obviously, the way those those will, the results of those cases is is going to impact. I think what local communities have to do. Not that we're going to come out with our own 
you know, masking mandate or things like that. I think that that's certainly what, you know, and it's not that we couldn't. I mean, I think that's in statute right now. But um, so we're still going to look at that. We still we still we still want to be able to um, do as much education as we can, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, really, this is not about COVID. The, the chapter four revision was about communicable disease. And the powers that are vested to the health officer through 252 have always been there. Well, been there for 20, 30 years. And we know that um, if, if, you know, if people knew that we had to use those powers to isolate somebody that was had an active TV in Portage County, and we have within the last three years, they would say, that's exactly what I want you to do. I want to make sure that person's not in the community spreading TB. But because I think this is affecting so many more people, um, I think that there's some misinformation out there. But at the end, um, you know, it's our hope to be able to bring this back, uh, you know, obviously through the HHS board with as much community education out there as possible. Uh, so people truly understand that, you know, we're, we're not trying to close people down. We're not trying to shut businesses down. Um, we're just truly trying to, to codify and put this in our ordinance, which it has, which it should have been for quite some time. So, Supervisor Gifford. Yeah, we, uh, when we do finally have the dose, the vaccine doses in county, you know, we're ready to poke and jab. How is uh, HHS going to inform the people? How's that going to be done? Website or? Yeah, yeah it'll be website. It'll be the book on Facebook. Um, it'll be, you know, all sorts of social media that'll go out there. I'm sure we'll do press releases um, depending on, you know, how many we get and when, um, you know, we're, we are yeah. well prepared to do mass vaccination clinics. We've done them in the past. We do them for flu every year. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the difference here is, is in regards to, you know, you have to look at location because it's different than flu. With flu, I can line everybody up in a line and just keep them coming through. Here, I got to assure distancing and things like that. So, so there's some work to do around that, but, but that's not insurmountable. But we'll let, we'll let people know that. Yeah, because if you saw the Porsche County Gazette, the Friday edition, and on the front page it says uh, Triggs Pharmacy is also going to be in the in yep. the act and uh, but the guy that they interviewed had no timeline no yeah. no information when when it would start yeah and nobody does and, and honestly you know um you know we don't care where you get your vaccination from we just hope that you get vaccinated they're gonna that's your choice and some people will get it and some people won't uh, obviously i think we're hoping that we'll get 70 80 percent of our population vaccinated so and I'm I'm just hoping when people get around that they don't wait till the last minute to get that second one. Uh, and I don't know how much of a window you have between that ray. You know, it's yeah, like, that's that's a great question, Al. Uh, because otherwise, you'd go on the day you're supposed to, and you're scrambling around, and oh, it's the second one. It's like we don't have any. Now where do you go? <laughs> so, and I I mean, uh, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to come up that we're not even thinking of, but. The poor person who gets stuck doing that and driving to Marathon County or something to get a so. Uh, Supervisor Barry Jakowski. Ray, are both vaccines, both uh, the initial one and then the booster, are they the same dose and the same vaccine, or are they two different? Uh, a and a B. Right. No, I, I think that I, I I can't answer that. I don't know the difference between that, but but you know I know that you have to have two to complete the series. Anybody else? Supervisors Astro, then Supervisor Pataki. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess uh, just a comment that um, uh, after that uh, Chapter 4 uh, issue was sent back to the HHS committee, I find it kind of perplexing for all of the concern and interest that took place at our last meeting. Uh, we have received no input from anybody anywhere on regarding this, which we had, I know, uh, 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 Chris Holman had asked for uh, input and we've gotten nothing. So it's just kind of interesting. Supervisor Pataki. Uh, maybe uh, Barry for Barry Jakowski. Uh, uh, what I understand is there are, it's the Moderna, you get two 100 milligram doses 20, uh, 28 days apart, and the Pfizer is 230 micrograms uh, 21 days apart. So the, the micrograms are the same for, for both shots? 
Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Executive Holman, do you have anything to add or? Uh, no, sir. I think uh, Ray's handled it very well. He's said everything that I was going to say. I mean, if people have other questions for me, I'm certainly happy to answer them. But, um, but yeah, I think we're all, you know, I think everybody's excited about our, you know, there is a ray of hope there with vaccines on the horizon and coming down through distribution networks. But, um, you know, you'll hear it on the news and everywhere that vaccines are being talked about it, that even though they're, uh, they're coming our way, it doesn't mean that we can relax everything else. We still got to stay vigilant and, you know, wear our masks, watch our distance and things like that until we get uh, a larger portion of the population vaccinated. So I think, you know, it's going to be a lot of uh, communication, a lot of messaging campaigns to try to give people a uniform message on, on what to expect, but also uh, to provide them with all the information that uh, can hopefully answer the questions they have. Cause I know that a lot of this is new to people and not everybody, you know, is well equipped to dive into, you know, the, the release data from Moderna or Pfizer about their vaccines. Uh, so we'll, we'll work on kind of packaging that information up and getting that out to the public uh, on a, on a consistent basis so that people have a lot of different access points to the information that, will help them kind of understand what's going on and also uh, inform the decisions that they're making and, and hopefully mitigate uh, some of the misinformation or, or misunderstandings that are out there. Supervisor Dodge. Um, there may be some supervisors that are not aware that Executive Holman is participating in one of the um, I don't know what you call it, exercise Trials. 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 Um, and he had his second shot, I believe, today. Can you tell us how you're feeling? <laughs> uh, yep, that is true. And I, I feel very good. And uh, I'll, I'm, I'm expecting the same sort of symptoms that are expected from these sort and well, most vaccinations, really, um, uh, over the next couple of days. And then things should resolve. So... But yeah, it's been exciting to be a part of that, and I've been trying to communicate about that as well for all the same reasons I said earlier. In a sense, to you know, if if my experiences can offer some reassurance to folks that um, the vaccines, whichever one it is, are are safe and effective, and I think that that's that's worth taking the time to to share that with people. It's it's certainly not about as much about me or in my experience as it is about you know all of the volunteers who have been in these trials and all the scientists and researchers and everybody who have really uh, done an excellent job in kind of uh, taking uh, research that had been ongoing for quite some time and moving it along as this all unfolded. You know, I think I read today that Moderna, once China had released the the genetic map of the virus. Moderna had kind of mapped out their vaccine answer over a weekend. And so then it was a matter of time to say, how do we start conducting phase one, phase two, and phase three trials? And so uh, I've said it before, but this really is to me uh, a lot like the the moon race, the amount of time, energy, and resources, and effort that's gone into doing something. And it's very remarkable uh, in a short period of time, but ma maintaining all of the rigor and safety and standards that you'd expect from all the agencies and people involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. I go that way. I'm going to put a mic. Next yeah. item, uh, a look back at 2020. I try and do this uh, every year at some of the accomplishments and things. Uh, some folks are not on all these other committees or aware of all the things that are going on. So, uh, in some of the accomplishments, so I always try and uh, do that at the end of the year. And after listening to Ray and Chris, I look forward to next year us being able to uh, get together, all of us, and and be able to uh, celebrate the the end of 2021 uh, all together and safe. So uh, the first uh, item I had on here in capital letters was COVID. Uh, <laughs> that everybody the whole year was pretty much consumed with that in in 
and touched every committee, touched every uh, county board supervisor and all the families throughout the county as well. But uh, we had set up testing uh, with the Wisconsin National Guards, the wing testing. We had done uh, five uh, different times. Uh, we were way out in front of the rest of them and trying to uh, other counties trying to uh, get people tested and run through that. Uh, and I want to tell Ray and Gary, hang in there. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you for all you do. So uh, we had four elections, February, April, August, November. These weren't easy elections either. Three of them were with the COVID, but then there was all, signs, all kinds of upheaval that went along with them with court decisions and in uncertainties. And we did that with uh, a brand new county clerk as well as a deputy clerk. And I think that uh, is a big tribute to to that office and the work that they do. Uh, I think that uh, could have been a big mess and, and it wasn't. So thank you for, for all, uh, all you do. There you go. Uh, we, brought, we brought Portage County into the 21st century with virtual meetings, updated our cameras and our mics. I was uh, listening to a, a meeting from home and Super, uh, Executive Holman was typing on his uh, laptop and I had to text him and I said, I can hear you at home, quit doing it. And he, he replied, I said, those new mics are really something. So uh, they are very sensitive over in uh, uh, one and two in the annex. So. Uh, Staff working from home, Laura and, and everyone who had to try and uh, IT uh, getting computers and and working through those and policy changes as well. Uh, the new tablets and the software uh, that will allow board members to vote remotely that will be rolling out soon as well, along with the new laptops. The new laptops are here. We've been working through some of the the hiccups with those as well, but uh, the folks at home will be able to vote on that as well once we get it up and uh, up and running. So. Uh, Three new UVC lights for the jail. Uh, one's a robot and uh, two are handheld for sanitizing. These robots uh, will go around the room. It looks like a black light is what it looks like. And as it goes around the room, it kills the germs uh, on the surfaces. Uh, it'll kill fish, it'll kill uh, plants. So anything you've got in there that's living uh, it doesn't do very well. It's uh, these lights, I believe, are 10 times stronger than the sun, so you don't want to look at them or you don't want them uh, to uh, shine on your skin. But uh, it's a very good way to be able to sanitize some, some surfaces and make sure that everybody is protected uh, in that uh, environment. And I, I don't know uh, if that's going to be able to go anywhere else at certain times. I think they'll, they'll share if there's uh, opportunities available to uh, one other item, uh, no resident from the Portage County Health Care Center passed away, thank God, or even tested positive for COVID. That is huge. So, thank you to those folks, all that work. Uh, that, that is uh, a really uh, uh, an accomplishment in itself. So, uh, we also completed a census, and you'll see that later in there. And this, again, was without any budget. And thanks to all those who helped to make that happen. I know that uh, uh, Melissa, uh, Joan, and Melissa, if you're on here, uh, anybody else uh, that was in that group uh, that's here tonight that you can think of as well, please chime in and, and share those. But I know when I would contact Joan about certain things, it was the next day I had stuff here. She was a, I, I heard, heard reports she was a spark plug with this as well and, and uh, quite the go-getter uh, to make sure this, and this is a huge uh, accomplishment, uh, as you will see in, in our agenda as the last item, but uh, this was a big, big lift as well. So I appreciate that all that work that everybody, the citizens and, and the staff and the uh, board members uh, put into this. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, the bipolar ionization uh, will be installed before the year end. This project started in October. <laughs> and it, this is something that moved at lightning speed for county government. But uh, this building has it in it uh, now, and, and um, I think there's two, three, four other ones uh, that have as well. And uh, that is to help uh, combat uh, and fight pollution, cold and flu viruses, uh, possibly help work against the COVID. Uh, but there are uh, mold, uh, any of these other things. Uh, this is a, a big 
deal uh, to try and help uh, staff and any of the public that come into these buildings. We were able to do all of the county buildings uh, as well as some of them that were not ours. So, and there was, uh, we're hoping to get uh, CARES money grant back for that to get reimbursed. Uh, there was a lot of work from staff, from both legal, finance, purchasing <laughs> uh, facilities. This was huge. So that was a, was a very big deal as well. Passed the budget, which gets tougher and tougher every year. And then some of the capital improvement items. Uh, we, we, we finalized the highway expansion project, or as close as we're ever going to get to be calling it finalized. This has been a, a real struggle with this project. But if we ever get to building anything bigger in Portage County, uh, it was, sure was an education with this project, and we are a lot smarter for it. So, uh, and I want to thank Corey and Nathan for that. That was a, uh, a huge, huge <laughs> task, uh, and uh, again, it was such a learning curve. And uh, we were fortunate that uh, we know now what we do, but we had those people in place to help us through it and uh, to make sure those missteps were caught right away. And that's a, a big. Uh, a big thanks to uh, Nate and Corey both. So, uh, Standing Rocks Lodge uh, was finished, and if you haven't had a chance to get out there and see that, that is a, a beautiful facility. Um, we sold a lot in the Portage County Business Park, and we've got uh, two more pending, and that would leave us with three left. So we're almost almost out of the the park business. So. We received a grant approval for the Jordan Park Dam. We rebuilt Highway KK between Amherst Junction and Amherst. Three miles of lighted trail at Standing Rocks for the cross country skiing. These people, they get done, it gets darker early. These people get done work and they wanna go out and cross country ski or exercise. They can't go anywhere, but now we have three miles of lighted ski trails for the cross country folks, so that's great. Uh, eight miles of new mountain bike trails for Standing Rocks. Both of these were, were with very little or no tax dollars at all through donations and or the public uh, uh, doing it or taking on the, the work themselves and the organization. So that is, is huge. And also on last, uh, a successful United Way campaign, they raised several thousand dollars uh, more than they did last year and this is when a, a time when everybody can use it um, so those were those were just a few of the things that I had unless anybody at home or anybody else here can think of anything else that I may have missed that they would like to mention no nope. okay thank you the next the next item uh, this last year we also have had um, three supervisors pass um, Supervisor O'Brien, uh, Supervisor Borski, uh, who was also a past sheriff, as well as uh, recently uh, Supervisor Jim Clark. Uh, Jim was a county board supervisor for 30 years. <laughs> and then after that, he served on uh, committees. Uh, he was in the people that know him. A lot of you uh, may know him, may not. Uh, there's a few of you that have been around here a while as well. But one of the things that uh, uh, Jim uh, had a great sense of humor, and we had redistrict, and there was going to be two supervisors, Supervisor Krem and Supervisor Clark, that were in the same district, and they were going to have to have a runoff, and they uh, didn't want to do that. So they decided, uh, I believe it was Supervisor Clark on the county board floor, challenged Supervisor Krems to a coin toss on the 50-yard line at Gerke Field at high noon. <laughs> Judge Flugar flipped the coin to make sure that it was all legal and above board. <laughs> and uh, that was the, the, the kind of camaraderie uh, that these folks had uh, way back when. And it was... Uh, it was uh, Sad to hear that. I've known uh, Jim for, for quite a long time, and, and the folks that did know him, uh, uh, he had uh, quite a way of, of about himself. And uh, he, when he was there, you, you knew he was there. Even when you disagreed with him, he was uh, very cordial about it. And uh, after he walked out that door, it was done. Uh, so uh, he will be missed, and I would ask that uh, we just take a moment of silence uh, 
in remembering him. Thank you. I had one other thing here that I forgot on my look back. Uh, as the, we've got a new judge here, and he's got things moved around up here, and I'm not used to this and extra extra stuff. But uh, there was also an item here that just went out today, and it, it's worth noting, and, and please bear with me. Uh, it's to do with uh, the toys for the children, and it's this holiday season more than ever. Children need more Christmas cheer. COVID put a damper on everything. Uh, we asked Gilbert Brown, and this is from the Gilbert Brown uh, Gravediggers uh, uh, Association or Foundation, and uh, they asked, uh, asked Gilbert Brown if the COVID was going to stop him from making holiday miracles happen. His response is, I don't think so. Christmas is a time for hope and families to come together. Christmas can be a difficult time for families who struggle, and COVID has made some of those struggles even more evident. Those generous organizations uh, referred to have heard the call. Marines, Toys for Tots Foundation, Good 360, Jake's Diapers, Gilbert Brown Foundation, Wisconsin Association of Campground Owners have teamed up with Vista Royal Campgrounds and the Portage County Sheriff's Office to spread cheer. The goal to make as many dreams as possible come true for Wisconsin's children's. Gifts from the areas will include toys, books, games for families in need in Portage County. The Portage County Sheriff's Office and Vista Royale will be distributing gifts to 200 deserving children throughout our uh, local uh, partners. These partners are Portage County Health and Human Services, Almond Bancroft Schools, and Tomorrow River Schools of Amherst. So I, I will uh, have uh, the full... Uh, press release forwarded to you folks or did that go out to the supervisors uh, sheriff no. no i'll ask i'll forward this to kayla and ask her to to forward it on to you to read the, the rest of this uh as well but uh that's great that uh, the people are stepping up and uh, our sheriff's department uh, as well is going to to help uh, distribute these uh, toys for the children uh, it truly is a time for for the kids and people enjoy and live through the kids so they make the difference at christmas time so uh that's all i have uh, supervisor pataki and then supervisor johnson when we talk about the marine corps uh member of the marine corps league and we gave out 1500 pounds of food uh, about a week ago to the needy thank you sir supervisor johnson Thank you, Mr. Chair. And in the interest of diversity and inclusivity, it is the sixth day of Hanukkah. So to the members of our community who are celebrating Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Yes, happy Hanukkah to everyone. Uh, any other? Thank you, uh, Supervisor Johnson, for that. Anybody else? Okay, moving on. Public notices. Member of the public who wish to address the county board on specific agenda items must register their request at this time with such comments subject to reasonable control of the county board chair as set forth in Robert's Rules of Order. Okay. Confirmation of county executive's appointments. Appoint uh, me, uh, Wum Wuma Farkas, as the citizen member of the Diversity Affairs and Inclusiveness Committee for a two-year term expiring on April 18th, 2022 to replace Alicia Razi, Razi, who resigned. Razavi, Razavi. Razavi, thank you. Motion by Supervisor Moresi. Take us. Second by Supervisor Pataki. Any other discussion? All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution and ordinance. Number one. Resolution confirming the appointment of Nathan Check as the Portage County Highway Commissioner for another two-year term. Motion by Matt Jakowski, seconded by Supervisor Laddick. Discussion. I, I, again, I just want to say that uh, I think Nate uh, does a great job, and uh, uh, I've 
been on the highway committee <laughs> since I've been a supervisor and I try and attend a lot of those meetings. There's a lot going on and I've seen him make a lot of changes there uh, and all for the better. Uh, that is uh, quite, quite a department. So if there's no other discussion, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Number two. Authoriz authorization to enter into a contract with Energy Service Inc. for administration of the Wisconsin Home Energy Assistant Program. Resolution number 61, 2020, 2022, submitted by the Human Resource hum Health and Human Services Board. This resolution authorizes a contract with Energy Services Inc. for the administration of the Home Energy Assistance Program. Motion by Supervisor Dubeck, second, uh, second by Supervisor Moore. Any other discussion? All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number three, authorizing the addition of 2.0 FTE for the new community health nurse and a new community health educator position for the Health and Human Service Department mm -hmm. to be funded with grant funds and a <laughs> sequential budget adjustment. Resolution number 62, 2020, 2022, submitted by the Health and Human Services Board, Human Resources and Finance Committees. This resolution authorizes a budget adjustment and addition of two full-time positions in the Health and Human Services Department for 2021. This resolution requires a two-thirds supermajority vote. Motion by Supervisor Dodge, seconded by Supervisor Zastro. Discussion? All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number four, authorizing a budget adjustment uh, for acceptance of the Wisconsin Department of Health Service Opioid Response Grant. Resolution number 63, 2020, 2022, submitted by the Health and Human Services Board and Finance Committee. This resolution authorizes a budget adjustment for the acceptance of the opioid response grant. This resolution requires a two-thirds supermajority vote. Motion by Supervisor Gifford, seconded by Supervisor Zastro. Discussion? Supervisor Neville. On the contract. On the Portage County contract service form, summary form, item 20. Does, do they mean no, or do they mean it's not applicable? There is no form for this. It's the next page. Which one was it again, Mildred? Pardon me? <coughs> Which one was it again, Mildred? It's number 20. There is no number 20. And the page follows the resolution in the packet. I don't have that page. You don't have it. I don't have it. I don't know, I don't this... know what it is you're looking at. I don't have it in my packet, Mildred. Wait. Am I at the wrong? We're on the o opioid oh, one. Am... We're on the opioid one. <laughs> Number 63, right? Item number, f well, it's item number four. Resolution number four. I thought she's looking at the contract summary, which would be second page that we don't have. This one. Yeah. Sorry, it's the, it's the next item. I'm sorry. The next item? Okay. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> don't scare me like that, Mildred. <laughs> okay. All right. We've got a motion and a second. Uh, if there's no other discussion on this resolution, all those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number five, authorizing a 2020 budget adjustment 
for funding to respond to the COVID-19 public health emergency. Resolution number 64, 2020, 2022, submitted by the Finance Committee. This resolution authorizes a budget adjustment for funding for the COVID-19 response. This resolution requires a two-thirds supermajority vote. Uh, motion by Supervisor Rakowski, seconded by Supervisor Laddick. Supervisor Neville? No, nope, it's the next one, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor with aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm gonna go. Approving an extension of the current contract for inmate food services with Summit Food Service LLC. Resolution number 65, 2020, 2022, submitted by the Public Safety Emergency Management Committee. This resolution approves a three-year contract extension for inmate food services with Summit Food Service LLC. Motion by Supervisor Jankowski. Second by who? Uh, Supervisor uh, Ande. Uh, discussion. <coughs> Supervisor Neville. Item 20 on the Portage County contract summary form. If necessary, has the budget adjustment form been submitted to finance? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. Uh, Three NA. It, so it's not necessary, so it says if, no. If it's yeah. not necessary. Jenny. It's not necessary. There was no need for a budget adjustment. So the answer to that question should be yes. If it's necessary, has it been submitted? It's not necessary, so no, right. none but was then, submitted. The answer would be no or not applicable. It was not, not necessary, a, so one was not submitted. Not applicable would be the answer, not no. Well, the question is, is it, the question, the question no is, the question is, is it necessary? I understand that. So the answer should be not applicable. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Not, not no. Okay. Duly noted. Any, any other, any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> we need to get somebody. Is it Joan or who is it? Joan or Stan? Oh. I can tell. Lead him. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the rustling around on the on the desks and stuff when people aren't muted. It get, it's loud on this end. So thank you. Number seven: authorizing an agreement with Motorola Solutions Inc. to provide a public safety record management system computer-aided dispatch system and jail management system and other related systems, it's a lot of, along with ongoing maintenance and support to the new systems for the years 2022 through 2026. <laughs> Resolution number 66, 2020, 2022, submitted by the Public Safety Emergency Management Committee. This resolution authorizes a contract with Motorola Solutions Incorporated for various systems and support for the Sheriff's Office along with other local law enforcement agencies for the years 2022 to 2026. Move to approve. Motion by Supervisor Pataki, seconded by Supervisor Barry Jankowski. Discussion. Supervisor Jankowski. Jim Clark would ask, is anybody else but Motorola involved in this? <laughs> uh, who, would, who, would, who would like to answer the sheriff? He was proud of yeah, this, this has been a uh, capital improvement program, uh, program and it's been vested with numerous companies and um, with many um, different departments and other agencies that actually sat on the committees and went through the procurement process. That's how we got it defined down to Motorola. Okay. Supervisor Barry Jakowski. And you know, anybody who's had anything to do with radio communication and or cell phone communication, Motorola is, is the kingpin. So. Okay. 
Supervisor Neville, you had your hand up. Same thing, item 20 on the summary form, the contract summary form. Okay. We'll look at the wording on the we'll work at the we'll look at the wording on the form going forward. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, there's no further discussion. I'm looking at home. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number eight. A resolution in strong support of re-establishing local ramp access on County Highway X and I-39. Resolution number 67, 2020, 2022, submitted by the <laughs> Highway and Public Safety Emergency Management Committees. This resolution approves the stance of the County Board in strong support for re-establishing a local access ramp on County Highway X and I-39. Motion by Supervisor Pataki, seconded by Supervisor Laddick. Discussion. I have a comment and question. Supervisor Moresi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'm looking over uh, Commissioner Tech's uh, memo in this document, and it seems that we're up against a lot for making something like this actually happen. Uh, one being that Admir is sufficient. Um, the merging distances seem to be a problem uh, because of the 10 West interchange. Uh, and the cost of, you know, construction and, and design of this. Uh, these are all things we don't have money for right now. You know, that's 10 to $15 million potentially uh, just, to, just to build it. And not to mention the environmental impact. And while I agree that it would be nice to have expedited, you know, times for people who live in those areas, uh, it doesn't seem fiscally responsible to be you know, requesting something like that, even considering it's probably not going to be likely because the DOT is already, you know, like pretty against it. Uh, for those reasons, I'm, I'm going to be voting against this. Thank you. Supervisor Zastro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I didn't see anywhere in here if it indicated as to uh, like a head count or how many people this actually affects. Nathan, do you have any any rough number? I know there's a lot. He's he's gonna look that he's gonna look it up for us. Uh, he's got his laptop out. So anybody else have any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Chair, Supervisor Pataki, when uh, when the state uh, were, were, was putting in St. Casimir Road or Casimir Road. Uh, I mean, they never even looked at us or at the town of Dewey or town of Hall as far as what what the, what would happen if they took those ramps out. And we are we are just looking at the uh, ingress and egress going south. And and the reason for that is that, that is my area. Uh, we got the town of Dewey and, and the north part, the uh, northwest part of town of Hall, and. Uh, the the northwest part, part of the town hall is really getting populated and i travel down that almost daily and there are people walk and 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 others with their children walking and uh, i'm just afraid that you know with the uh, without those ramps and and cutting down on the response time for ambulances and police uh that you know we're going to have uh, we, and i i don't know how many people have have died because they did take those ramps out, but uh, there are many municipalities that are in favor of putting those ramps back. Nate, we're going to get a trap. We're going to get a rough traffic count or a accurate track or traffic count here. Sure. So the most recent traffic counts that the DOT has on their website was back in 2011. So looking at over nine years old here, but. The closest traffic count on County Road X near that interchange was 590 vehicles per day. And then just at the North Second Drive and County X intersection is 950 vehicles per day. Did that answer your question, uh, Supervisor Mercy? You're asking for traffic counts. That was me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. 
it does answer my question. I guess we can assume that those numbers are, are larger, seeing as that uh, study was done nine years ago. Correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Supervisor Dodge. It just seems unlikely that the DOT would agree to totally fund this project. And I guess I'd like to know why the county didn't say they would put up a certain amount. No blood for Materna. Well, <laughs> the DOT is going to tell you the same thing. We, yeah, I, well, I agree. No. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Oh, so Riser Pataki. Just one more thing. Uh, we, the county board in 2008 unanimously passed it and also in 2011. So there were two, uh, two resolutions passed. Anybody else? Supervisor Medine. Um, maybe a question to, uh, to Nate. We have a two mile, two miles south is Kashmir Road intersection. And that's the one that the state put in rather than connecting with X. Do we have excessive um, traffic of 950 cars per day on North 2nd that is causing a problem to have people go two miles south to get to the existing inter interchange? Or is that is that road sufficient to handle the 950 cars a day? Now, I know that it's not a county road, Nate, so you haven't looked at that thoroughly, but I'm just wondering if you do have a comment on that. Well, North 2nd is a town hall road, not a county road, but just for comparison on some of our medium to higher traveled county road, two lane county roads are in that three to 4,000 vehicles per day. Now North 2nd has higher driveway densities in certain parts of it. Um, it does have reduced speed versus a 55 mile an hour county road. So I wouldn't say there's any traffic backups in that area, but I believe public safety's concerns were with the reduced speed on North 2nd and the additional drive time on a 35 and 45 mile an hour road versus a 65, 70 mile an hour interstate. Anybody else? Supervisor Gussell. Basically, uh, uh, the highway committee is trying to eliminate a possible accident that's going to be, this is going to be a pressure point as the traffic increases. And they got a chance to fix an error that was made, and uh, that is the purpose for this. And I think it should be done. Anybody else? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor with aye. 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 Those opposed with your name? Bressie. Johnson. Anybody else? Bressie and Johnson. Motion passes. Number nine, recognizing community partners supporting the work of the 2020 Census Complete Count Committee. Resolution number 68-2020-2022, submitted by the Executive Operations Committee. This re resolution extends the County Board's appreciation of those who dedicated time and resources to the efforts of the Census Complete Count Committee. Make a motion. Motion by Moresi. Seconded by Johnson. Any discussion? Again, I, I want to... Uh, Give a thanks and and uh, a grant of appreciation. This was uh, this was a big deal, and again with with all volunteers. So mm -hmm. this is huge. Thank thank you to everybody. So uh, we have uh, Supervisor Neville. I, I don't know how many places we have that we can put out our thanks to the volunteers and to the people who donated, but. Um, I think everywhere the county can put it out on Facebook or whatever else, we should put out our thanks because it really is a stellar performance. I just wanted to emphasize. Joan, can you mute, please? <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Johnson. <laughs> um, it, it, I just wanted to say. 
Oh, I want to thank Supervisor Neville for making th that comment. Uh, yeah, let's share this out. A lot of people were involved. Um, and I sent um, personal uh, thank yous to to folks who, who uh, donated their time. Um, I just thought it was the right thing to do with the volunteers. And um, again, just, you know, Supervisor Honnell, I, I am publicly thanking you the success of that committee with you, um, you were simply amazing and you should be recognized for pounding the pavement, never asking for mileage, always doing it graciously and always providing the service to the people of Portage County. So thank you for that. Supervisor Moore. Yeah, um, I think, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for letting me speak. Um, again, I want to thank Supervisor Hano and Supervisor Johnson for keeping this complete count committee going. Um, I haven't gotten all the numbers from uh, the federal census count yet, but I have been getting numbers that um, rural communities uh, have performed better this time around than it has in the past. And, you know, I also think like Portage County, our numbers have gone up because um, we do have a uh, county uh, a county complete count committee, and this is uh, a lot of impact. And I feel that our county will um, feel the effects of this um, as the years come by. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, they had all kinds of events set up, uh, uh, meet and greets, and, and out at uh, the festivals, and then COVID came to town, and it all came to a screeching stop. Uh, they had uh, creative ways of getting the words out. I thought one of the best ones was the uh, the uh, food uh, placemats for the restaurants, and uh, uh, Joan was the delivery person for that. I, I'd call her and tell her I need some more the next day they were here at the clerk's office. It's a, she was a very, very quick and very responsive. But uh, those I thought were, were one of the you know great ideas that came out of that group was uh, that creative thinking. But as you're sitting there waiting for your food or you're looking down, it's like that's a, a great tool, especially when we couldn't meet or gather at the time. It was uh, quite an accomplishment. I don't think everybody realizes what a what a big uh, monumental effort it was. So thank you to both Joan and Melissa and everybody else that was uh, involved in that. So thank you. All right, if we don't have any more comments, uh, Supervisor Barry Joukowsky. Before we go, Mr. Chair, I know- I've got a motion and a second. I need to take action on that. Excuse me. Uh, if there's no further discussion on the uh, complete uh, count census committee, all in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Supervisor Barry Joukowsky. Thank you. Nothing further. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> I'll take a motion to adjourn for the end of the 2020 year. Motion by Supervisor Dubeck. Second in by Supervisor Jankowski. All those in favor with aye. 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 We're adjourned. Goodbye, 2020. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy, New Year. Happy Good New Year. <laughs>